few SUVs pack as much presence and class and as small a footprint as the Range Rover Evoque. It's had a bit of an update recently, so let's see how much of that thought remains unchanged. The Evoque gets some minor but quite impactful updates on the outside. So you now have pixel LED lighting with some sharp detailing. And the grille is now done up in a rectangular pattern to mimic the full-size Range Rover. This Evoque has been around a while but has never stopped being contemporary with its clean lines and simple surfaces. These changes just sharpen up this sense, merging cohesively. There are now some copper accents on the quite aggressive bumpers and on the bonnet that brighten up the car quite a bit. As before, the Evoque still draws attention with its sleek profile. The taut glass area with the converging bodywork is now notably enhanced by these new 19-inch wheels. With the more reductive, soft LED lighting, the rear continues with this overall crisper look. The shape may not make this apparent, but the Evoque has a sizable boot with a functional shape and low loading lip. In keeping with the functionality that a Range Rover should always have, there's a good 212 mm of ground clearance as well. Now on the inside of the Evoque, you have that same classy, minimalistic layout that you find in other Range Rovers and it really does make you feel special in much the same way. For example, these very simple surfaces, like these sloping surfaces here, or just the very simple design of the entire dash, that really stays with you. But of course, what really takes that to another level are the materials. So, of course, you have very different textures for this soft surface here, for this here. Similarly, most of the doors are soft. And then you have this really quite nicely done brushed chrome here with that dark effect that really stands out, especially at night or even in bright sunlight. But of course, the main thing, and you can't miss it, is this quite stark bare center console. And again, here to start with, the materials and finishes are great. This wood here feels exactly like wood this sort of rubberized effect to this new gear selector that also feels great. But of course, that does mean that usability has taken a bit of a hit. So while you do have a quite spacious sort of wireless charger here and some nice deep storage pockets here too and here as well, pretty much all of the car's functions are now in here in this 11.4 inch screen. Now this screen does have an intuitive interface and sharp responses especially the wireless phone pairing feature, but the sheer functions that are now packed in here make for a slightly difficult experience. Simple tasks like changing the drive mode or adjusting temperature takes more than a few taps, making life harder still on the move. The 12.3-inch driver's display, on the other hand, is now much more useful. It's got better resolution and it's easier to access its functions. Further, it will also project Google Maps from your phone pairing here, which is a great help usually. Complementing this is the new Range Rover steering wheel that fits into this new theme well. Now, given the general footprint of the Evoque, you might be thinking that the rear seat is a bit of a tight space, but we're pleasantly surprised with the amount of room that's back here. So, as you can see, I have enough space for my feet. I can tuck them under the seat, so that's not a problem. And even knee room is not bad at all, considering how Land Rover scooped out the seats. And another touch which you will be quite surprised by is the kind of headroom that is there. Now, this roof, unlike many other cars in this segment, is a fixed one. But that also means that there is... It's not very intrusive, so that of course helps. Yeah, this window could have been a bit larger. But again, the space itself is really quite comfortable when you see that the seat contouring is very thoughtfully done, so it's not too heavily contoured, or not too flat, and you're held in place quite supportively, which is nice. You also have a good deal of under thigh support. It's quite good for the segment, actually, and yeah, the backrest too. There's not too much of the lumbar support thing going on that we don't quite like, so in that sense, it does the job really well. It's also reasonably wide, as you now. You can have this folded down like this, but if you don't, for the middle passenger, considering this place is flat and there is a bit of a hump, but so yeah, tight fit for three, but it'll still do it, which is quite surprising. Now in terms of amenities, I just showed you the center armrest. You can also flip down these seats, but here's something a bit different. Of course, you get heated seats, which is a, it may not be very useful in our conditions, but it's there. But you don't get a separate climate zone. Instead, you just choose the airflow between hot and cold. 
So it's a bit different and it's not as effective as a fully different climate zone, but it gets the job done. But generally the air conditioning in this car could have been better optimized for our conditions. There's a great sense of quality, but fitment levels are still not at par with German rivals. But the Range Rover brand commands a premium over these competitors, so the Evoque sweetens the deal with quite a good list of features. Here's what you get with the Evoque at this price point. But it's the functional additions that arguably make you feel more special. You have one of the best 360 degree camera setups around, a rear view monitor, front and rear washers, and a full all wheel drive system with hill descent control, as well as a terrain response system. Safety is reasonable too, but we would have liked ADAS functions given the pricing. Now, once you start driving the Evoque, you realize that, of course, the experience is slightly different from a regular full-size Range Rover. You sit a bit lower in the car. And yeah, visibility is not as great. It's still good, but the sort of theater-like view that you get from a Range Rover, that's not there, but it's still fine. This blind spot could have been slightly lesser. But like every other Range Rover, what really catches your attention at first is the refinement. Sure, the engine is a bit grumbly at stop-start traffic, or just when it's moving along slowly. But like right now, once you've sort of picked up steam, you really are aware of just how quiet it is inside. And that really does make you feel that your money is well spent. This is paired with quite a fluid and serene driving experience. The 2-litre diesel in this Evoque D200 makes 204 PS and 430 Nm, pairing with a 9-speed automatic. What catches attention most is the wide usable power band, helped by the fairly intuitive gearbox. Yes, you sometimes feel caught out by the gearbox's hesitancy, but sticking it to the S mode sorts that out largely. But look past this, the Evoque always seems to have a good chunk of torque at its disposal. So it doesn't feel lethargic in traffic and seems to pull right up to 4000 RPM, so faster driving is low effort too. There's no big step up in power, but a smooth growing rush that becomes predictable soon enough. You have drive modes that alter responses and damping to a certain degree, so the Evoque does well to offer a sharper experience, although German rivals will go further in that regard too. Now the ride and handling character just goes again with the rest of the car. So yeah, it's not the sharpest again like some of its German rivals around bends, but what you do get instead is some really great ride quality, another Range Rover trait. So yeah, in India over sharper bumps and potholes, you do feel it, there is a sharp edge to it, but again, it's not especially uncomfortable. But what really endears this car to you is that despite this very posh, prim exterior, it's still a real tough SUV underneath. You have that sense of toughness of the fact that it'll just keep going even in the rough stuff. You feel that over bad roads and that really is reassuring. Quite fun feeling to be honest. And then of course once the road smoothens out and you're going a bit faster, you have the ride quality become a bit more plush, it becomes quite pliant, quite calm, quite soothing, just as you'd want a luxury car to be at this price. Now with this sort of setup, you don't get adjustable springs and so on. In terms of how it handles, again, it's sort of taken a middle ground. It's not as sharp as some of its rivals, but also not as soft as some of them. So what that means is at high speed, of course, you will do a lot of long distance driving, something like this. It does feel calm, composed. The steering is a bit on the heavier side, but it could have been a bit more direct considering the heft. But again, it's something that you do get used to. Now, in terms of uh, winding stretch of road, considering its small footprint, considering the fact that it's not very heavy, it handles it well. As long as you don't push it too further, that's when you realize that the steering could be a bit more direct, the suspension could be a bit more taut in that, in that sense. But for most cases, for most of your needs, say on a road trip to a hilly area or something, it will handle it just fine. Price to be is 80.79 lakh on road for this D200 variant, the Range Rover Evoque asks for a notable premium over its rivals. We would have liked better safety functions and some of the rough edges in the interface, driving position and high speed stability ironed out, but you see value in this with the Range Rover badge and the striking looks that come with it. The comforting driving experience and the long features list helps too.